session to order uh, for the purposes of discussing uh, building assessment and options uh, for future improvements here. So we've got a PowerPoint presentation um, for everyone uh, here that Dean's projecting and uh, I will turn it over to Dean at the podium. All right, thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, so uh, myself, the police chief and fire chief kind of put some information together that condenses the whole um, idea of where we're at with some of our more significant buildings. Not that any of them are, are, are not important or whatever, but kind of pull it all together so that you can get an idea of price tag, where everything is at, and where we think uh, things will be, and to put a couple options before you for your consideration. Um, going forward, there is a, a, a certain time constraint involved with putting anything together that would potentially go before the voters. Um, so we, we, we have to keep this at a, a pretty good pace to make sure that we meet all the uh, requirements so that it could be before the voters as early as uh, August. So this is uh, just a uh, briefing. Um, just an outline that, you know, the purpose is to, the presentation is to review the status of the buildings, just like I talked about, and to provide some solutions and options that we can um, put together and how we can go forward and protecting and improving our uh, public assets, assets, which are the buildings. So I wanted to uh, make sure we compress this into a manageable size. I mean, the building assessment, I think, was over 100 pages. Um, quite a bit to digest and really I mean beyond the summary doesn't bring a lot of value um, to the to the average person even to the to the council person to get into the you know the weeds of what buildings need paint and what buildings need uh, chiller systems and and all the different things so this hopefully will kind of get it down to the brass tacks of uh, of the problem in front of us that you guys are very, very acutely aware of. Um, and then the last thing would be to provide you guys with realistic budget numbers so that you can uh, make some decisions going forward. So this is right out of the building assessment and you got the low numbers all the way to the right and then you have the estimated high numbers. Um, for the purposes of what we're talking about, um, I'm going to recommend we stick with the high estimates. There's nothing to indicate uh, that inflation is going to make things cheaper or easier. Um, and I, I think from a budgetary standpoint in our situation, um, we, we want to err on the side of, uh, of caution. And the other part of it is with a lot of the stuff, we want to make sure we do it right. Um, and and I th so I think that's uh, that's where we have been working from. So if you total up the uh, the high costs, there comes out to 23.3 million um, for all the <coughs> building improvements, renovations, and whatever that were highlighted in the uh, building assessment. Um, of the 23 million, 8.7 million of those are. Um, just for police and fire buildings. And, and that's an important number to remember too because if the decision is made to um, try to replace the 100-year-old uh, police and fire station, those numbers can be walked out or walked back from the, the high estimate of uh, building commitments. So that takes that 23 down to about 15 spread amongst the other facilities. Um, also, if you go through that 23 million, pretty easily there's probably about 2.5 million that can be walked back or line itemed out. And th these would be things that are either already planned, are already scheduled, budgeted for, um, or they're things that would, we would have normally done and resolved and taken, taken care of over the next up to five years um, anyways and I feel very comfortable that um, that two five that 
in that 2-5 number. That is, but that's a good number to have if you look at the 23 because that's about 10% and that gives you a, a good leeway as far as different things that can happen. Um, you start a project and like we found out with you know the the pool and uh, and the rink and stuff like that you run into things that you just didn't think were going to happen um, we and we've had the same thing happen with a couple of the roads we've done where we had to use our uh, our reserves for the project so though that's where those numbers are important <clears throat> and I feel pretty comfortable um, with those numbers so uh, I'm just going to give you a brief, uh, brief overview here, and then uh, the fire chief and the police chief are going to, uh, they put a couple slides in here to kind of go over their facilities. Um, but, you know, we've talked for a number of years, at least the nine years that I've been here, about going from two fire stations to one, um, and Chief Anderson will talk about that a little bit. Um, but uh, police and fire station one downtown are, are almost 100 years old um we got every bit of mileage out of that building that we possibly could have i mean it's been uh extraordinary i mean it's still a you know uh you know important corner in our in our town's history and everything but um it's 100 years old and it's and it has a lot of challenges um, with it, as you as you know from looking at the uh, building assessment, um, and some of the stuff that you guys have talked about in the past. Uh, no limit, uh, no women's locker rooms. We don't have proper housing for fire gears. These are all things that have changed over time. When when these structures were first came into existence and use and everything, we didn't have women police officers. We didn't have women firefighters. Um, the fire gear and stuff that you know Chief Anderson can talk about. We didn't have to have separate storage because the gear was contaminated because we didn't know it caused cancer. That's just the facts. Um, when I got here, one of the other things we were buying a new fire truck. We had to buy a fire truck that would fit in the door because the old design. We we literally had four inch four inches of clearance and we just we and if you remember uh people that have been here a while um the old aerial that we had that we got rid of eight years ago um had to be stationed at fire station two on king road farthest away from our high rises because it couldn't fit so a lot of things have tra uh, changed and whatever so um, I'll let uh, Chief Anderson come over here and he can pop through a couple of his slides. Okay, so um, some of what I'm going to go over is just kind of same things that uh, the administrator just pointed out. But some of the current def deficiencies in our fire stations that we have right now, um, and <coughs> some of these things you can see. Uh, um, Mr. Creech already had spoke to, but um, the proper decontamination areas and zones to fire stations. Um, as he alluded to, we, um, when these buildings were built, we had no idea the contamination that that smoke and soot and debris that we have on on our on our gear on our bodies, for that matter, um, contained. It is carcinogenic. Um, we do have a higher rate of cancer than the general public by 10%, and we have a um, higher rate of mortality from cancer by 15%. So fire stations have evolved with this in mind. Um, our stations currently, you step off, you back that truck in after a fire, you step off that truck in your contaminated gear, we basically wash uh, you know, with it on your back with a hose and a scrub brush. And then we set it off to the side and we have to, you know, basically uh, take that stuff out to station two because that's the only place that we have the special, um, I'll call it a washing machine, it's called a gear extractor that gets to the right temperatures and is able to remove those contaminants from that gear. Um, 
at that point, that firefighter still has absorbed some of these toxins. They still have them on their body. They're going to have to go through any of the other spaces in the station to get to a, uh, a shower facility. So they're traipsing through the office space, they're traipsing through the living space to the farthest end to get to that shower, which they can then get that stuff off of them. Um, that's not something that happens now with newer stations. They build it to where you have those facilities right off of the apparatus bay. And so you don't ever take those contaminants into our, our living quarters, into the office space, or any of the public area that we would be um, doing training and so on and so forth. Um, apparatus size, as, as uh, Dean had mentioned, you know, the trucks, and you can see from that picture, there are trucks from, from that day and age, they fit in those bays with uh, plenty of space. Um, he talked about the, the aerial that had four inches of clearance. You know, it was always a concern in major snow events. Did we get some of that cleared out from the door so it didn't raise the truck up as we backed in to where we might scrape? And then, you know, the little elbow that you have on your garage door opener? Well, that had to be spaced between the rungs of the ladder because it would have caught them if you don't position it just right. That's how we made that fit. Um, DEI bathroom shower facilities. Um, so we talked a lot about, and I use the, the DEI um, buzzword, because we talk a lot about men and women's shower facilities, but the reality is, is nowadays, they do individualized shower rooms and bathrooms, so you're not co-showering with anybody. Um, that, and that's just, the, the, that's how things are done um, currently. Um, inadequate training area. We don't have a designated training room or training area. We have an open space um, in the living quarters upstairs. It's basically the locker room. Um, when we um, host training events and, and in order to um, capture some of these training funds that the state provides, we have to host them and we have to incorporate and invite in other agencies, other departments in order to utilize those, those um, grant funds to do so. And we're inviting them into basically our, you know, some uh, folding tables and chairs in our um, living space to do our training. Um, now there is more, usually is dedicated training space with all the multimedia stuff that you can um, actually do so. That's just classroom training. We don't also have any space in which we can do practical hands-on training as well. There's requirements through, um, or recommendations for hours of training annually through ISO for um, grading your department that we can't obtain because we don't have the facilities in which to do so. <clears throat> Equipment storage, there is literally no storage in these um, buildings, either one. Um, we had uh, DPS uh, build us a shed out at Station 2, um, affectionately known as the Cookie Shed. Um, Rick might have had something to do with that. <laughs> um, but, and we can tell that story a different time, but um, that's full. Uh, there's no space in there. We actually use a um, repurposed trailer for storage space of some equipment. ADA compliance, always a concern. We invite the public into our facilities. They are, it is a, a public building, uh, so to speak. Um, we don't have compliance with the, the ADA um, specs, so it's a somewhat of a dangerous building um, when we when you invite people in. Um, and then the exercise and wellness facilities. I mean, obviously, um, police officers, firefighters, we, we have a, a physical nature job. We don't have a um, well-suited facility to provide opportunity um, for that wellness. So this is, now you're gonna see some, um, this is part of my, um, capstone project for staff and command. Um, this is a model mapping using GIS systems um, that will map and tell you where your stations are uh, and it can also identify where they should be. 
So on the, uh, on the left side of the screen, or my left, um, you see the two blue dots. Those are our two current fire station locations. The overlaying blobs indicate um, the reach of each one of those stations in a four minute time frame. That is the NFPA um, standard for response is they want that first due fire engine to meet, to make any um, location within four minutes, 90% of the time. As you can see with our two stations currently, with the outline of Trenton in place, we don't um, actually meet that standard for a, a decent amount of our community. Now that is average normal traffic time, so it's taking into account stoplight, stop sign, and normal traffic speed. Um, but um, looking at the one on the right, having a centralized location, and that location I can tell you is in the west and Fort Street in a very generalized um, um, grid, that that meets, we would meet that standard of four minutes response 90% of the time within our community. It also has a couple little numbers to note on there. Station one's coverage, that 7,823, that's the uh, population number that that's, that station serves within four minutes. And station two currently serves about 14,000 in population. With the, um, I, I was unable to carve out that section of uh, Riverview that's, that's also accounted for in that. But when you look at that same number with a centralized fire station in that strategic location, <coughs> we're now hitting that 18,000 mark, which uh, you know I'm sure we're all aware our population is 18,500. So, and then just to give you an idea of a, a building and what it could look like um, that would, uh, I do have the floor plan of this drawing here, that this does meet the needs of current Trenton uh, Fire Department as well as um, abilities to absorb any future that we would possibly um, need to account for over the next, I would say, 50 years. Okay, now we'll talk a little bit about the police side of the building. Um, when we were given uh, part of this project uh, by the city administrator, uh, what we did at the police department, myself and Deputy Chief Neese, uh, got a group of eight individuals together uh, from three years of experience to 23 years of experience and sat down and tried to do a needs, wants, what do we need, what are our problems here at the police department. So we came up with a uh, almost a 40-page PowerPoint with pictures. Well, you're not going to get that today. You're going to get a little rundown, but um, we have that with photos that we go into a detail uh, of the deficiencies. But first off, we'll go over the history of our building. So the construction of what was called the municipal building was completed in 1927. It was uh, initially Trenton City Hall, the court, the police station, then the jail, and the Trenton Library was in the basement. So it served us well. Uh, never truly intended to be a police station. It's not set up to be conducive for those operations. Uh, further, through the IACP, the uh, lifespan of a police department is probably around 50 years. So we have well gone over. We've, we've doubled uh, the output here of the building. So a couple current deficiencies here at the police department. Some are going to be the same that you have heard with the fire department. Others are going to be different when it comes to uh, apparatus and that. But no women's locker room or changing area, no men's locker room changing area. We currently in the basement have one toilet and one shower that drips a little bit. Um, but as you would see later, um, right next to it, we had raw sewage coming up through the pipes last week uh, that we had to have an emergency repair on. So that's, that's what our officers are, are living with and dealing with. Uh, on a normal basis here. Um, no training area or classroom. Like Keith had mentioned, um, we have nowhere when we bring people in to house training. We've had to house it at other locations. Um, no classroom, no training. We do have a lot of training, either virtual or in person. Um, that is something we want to have highly trained police officers and we want to be able to house that training. We don't have that. 
Uh, equipment storage is inadequate. Um, again, we have things stacked in rooms all over the place. We do not have uh, normal storage areas. And again, we have a three-story building, which you see is non-ADA compliant. We don't have an elevator. Uh, we haven't had an elevator now for probably six months uh, after we uh, rescued uh, Corporal Chapaniak from the elevator and, and pulled him up through. But um, so that's been down for about five, six months. Uh, the stairs, uh, not easy. We have servers. We have server racks that are just sitting upstairs because we can't take them down. Luckily, we've had uh, some of the DPW members help us out with, with a few things, but we can't even get equipment up and down the stairs. Um, the, uh, it's not a zero entry either. There's steps to get up into the police department, first off, from West Jefferson, and the ramp is falling apart. There, there really is no access if you can't navigate stairs uh, to the police department. So another conference room or area for meetings, emergency operations center. Um, we do have not, we do not have a place in the department where we can really have administrative conference meetings, union meetings, or uh, disciplinary meetings. Uh, the emergency operations center currently, which is located in the basement, which Paul has, sometimes he has to bring his rake in because the leaves blow in through the door or water. It's in the basement where the raw sewage was just in a different area. Um, that's technically right now the emergency operations center for the city of Trenton, uh, which is inadequate. Uh, a few more deficiencies. No workout or exercise facility. Now, it does sound like a want, but the majority of um, police departments and fire departments now, it's standard uh, for health and safety. Um, no break room, lunch room, report writing room. So we have one room right now, and it's the squad room. The squad room houses five computers. That's also where they eat. That's also where we have roll call. That's also where people come in and talk. That's also where they test their narcotics and their drugs. It's all in one area. Right where they eat is where they process evidence. We do not have other space <coughs> in the department. Most departments have separate report writing rooms, separate squad rooms, and uh, separate break and lunch rooms. We do not have any of those. As you see the raw sewage I had mentioned, um, unsecure or outdated evidence rooms. So we currently have four evidence rooms at the police station, plus two others at uh, uh, another location. Um, we should not have four places for evidence. We do not have rooms big enough. Um, and those have been patched together. Uh, you could go through the ceiling if you wanted to. There's no hard ceiling. When we're going through the accreditation process, we're going to start. Those will never pass the accreditation. We'll have to make some um, adjustments somehow. Uh, but there is direct access to the roof. There's water that comes in from the door into the property rooms. Um, again, the, the PowerPoint that we put together, the, what you saw from the collaborative was just a piece. Um, we've gone, taken our own photos, and, and at a later date, we'll, we'll show you some of these problems uh, firsthand. So no secure interview room. Sounds, okay, well, what could that be? We have an interview room up in our detective bureau. So what happens is if we have somebody that's committed a, a violent crime, a felony, we bring them in from the jail. We walk them out of the jail. They can see the exit door. And then we walk them past the records clerk and any other civilian employees. Then we walk them up the stairs. Then we walk them through the administration way. Then we walk them up to the second floor where the interview room is. There is no secure place in the jail. Um, and it's, it's a hazard. And it's been like this. Uh, for years and years. This isn't anything new, but it is a problem we have um, in the jail. So jail operations have ceased. Um, it's not efficient to monitor or house prisoners. Um, back in 2002, the jail closed operations for the Down River agencies. Um, and as we look at this, we have 6,500 square feet in the jail. Um, many of it, much of it is not monitored. We currently um, probably 21 people we could house in that jail at one time. We had a full-service jail. So it, realistically, what we need to do is downsize that um, and, and maybe have about 10, which some are part-time, uh, some are maybe a little bit longer. But we can't be in the business of housing other people's prisoners from the Down River Agency on the backs of, of our residents and our funds. So uh, there is going to need, need to be a, a jail downsizing which would be right fit for our department. 
the no temperature control, the roofs are leaking. Um, we do have buckets constantly around. And I know some of those issues are going to be addressed, and I think the city administrator had said th those are things that we have to maintain um, uh, on a better basis. But when you go through the assessment, it isn't that we haven't been doing our job trying to keep things up because that's always the knock, you just let it go. That, that's not the case. We have a 97-year-old building that, that has cracks in the structure, in the walls, um, in, in the foundation. So that, that's really where our problem is. And again, outdated jail, uh, station monitoring, access control. Um, the whole police department needs to be monitored. We have spots right now in the jail that we can't see uh, people. Now, there's some configurations that we are going to fix, but um, even the, the access control is way outdated and uh, it's not real safe. So a modern police station. I could have given you a ton of pictures, um, but this one uh, is from Green Oaks Township. Uh, but it has to be inviting, accessible, and able to handle the needs of the department and the community. And in our other PowerPoint presentation that, that you'll see at a later date, um, it'll go into many of these things that what does the community need out of their building, right? What do the police need out of the building? And there are a lot of things that uh, new, new builds they have, we do not have, um, but uh, we're looking at maybe a one level style, obviously for accessibility, the more you go up, the more you pay, and we're already having those problems with the elevators and everything like that. So just an option. Um, as uh, the fire chief talked about location, the police department is in a, a funny situation where our location is all over the city. Our officers are on the road. They're driving around. So a central location is nice, but um, whether it's on the same footprint, whether it's moved to a foreign west area, th those are things that, that we can have that discussion on, uh, whether it stays downtown, whether it's in the DDA district, wherever it may be. Um, it's, it's important. And it's important for us in the community, but it's not as important as the fire for their response time because our officers are on the road. But uh, that's that, and we'll have a, a larger presentation later. Good job. Checked. All right, so for what I got left here, just to give you some assumptions. Um, so we've gone through the costing and stuff. Um, for new build and uh, a new police station roughly um, with all soft costs and everything rolled in for what we think would be the needs and everything uh, should be about six hundred and fifty dollars a square foot and um, price out at about thirteen thirteen million dollars um, a new fire station um, is a little cheaper per square foot, but that's because the apparatus area is less expensive, um, less expensive to build, and it would be in the 550. I think we we're at 550 um, for uh, per square foot, and it would come out to about 14 million. And th these are doing it right, not really cutting any corners, and what other people have been able to do. Um, Land acquisition, I, my recommendation would be to set aside um, about $2 million for land acquisition. We can sit there and talk about, well, you know, we would be able to go from two stations to one and we could sell this property. I want to te temper that with, um, as something y'all are aware of, but in case anybody is watching at home or whatever, commercial property values are in the basement. We have unoccupied commercial structures in our downtown, over on, actually right next to the fire station too, and stuff, so I wouldn't want to hang our hat on that. When it comes to be and, and everything, when we would shed those properties, we would love to, but just, it, it's, it wouldn't be a good thing to not uh, leave plenty of land acquisition money in there. So the other numbers I talked about earlier, you know, the 23-3 um, as far as uh, citywide renovations, if you back, if the will was to let's build a new police and fire, you could back about 8.7 million out of that 23 and you'd be right around 15 million, give or take. And like I said before, there's 2.5 million in Light I line item exclusions out of there, so there is some variance, some you know wiggle room, if you will, 
um, where things could be moved around and adjusted. I mean, it could be you get into the project and you go, well, you know what, this isn't as bad. We need to um, direct X amount of dollars over to another facility that needs something more or, or something that's going to be more of a longer term thing. Or maybe it's a, something where we're, we're bidding out roofs and, and we go, well, we can save money and do this building now even though it could have waited three or four more years. So those are all decisions that would have to be kind of made as the process um, goes on. But in the end, um, the, f the couple of options that are before you for your consideration and, and discussion or whatever, option one, um, just rip the band, not, not rip the Band-Aid off, actually put a Band-Aid on. Um, invest the $23 million as suggested by the building assessment. Um, we'd have to expend those funds within 36 months of issuance of the, the bond money. Um, this is, we would have to set the repayment of debt up with the taxpayers uh, between 20 and 30 years. The, here's the problem. I think everyone sitting here recognizes that in 20 or 25 years, maybe the debt will be paid off, but probably we're going to be right back to square one. You're going to have a 125-year-old police station and fire <coughs> station, and your King Road fire station is going to be uh, another 25 years old, so that makes it 85 years old. So, I mean, we keep it around for a centennial if that's really important to everybody. But it, it in my, this is just my opinion, um, this, it doesn't really make long-term fiscal sense. I would foresee, I don't think any of us will be sitting here in this room in 25 years, but even if you went aggressive at 20-year 20 20-year um, 20 debt repayment, at 20 years you're going to have to turn around and go back again because you didn't make the big investment. And believe me, I am not oblivious to the price tag and everything that, that is involved here, but, you know, our forefathers, not to be overly dramatic, but our forefathers, you know, made a lot of big investments and and in most recent history a lot of cans had to get kicked down the road simply because of economics um, but there is an avenue um, to kind of redo and reset everything um, in Trenton um, so the other option well there's a third one on here but I don't want you to get too excited over it um, but the other option would be if um, you really wanted to rip the Band-Aid off and it would involve building a new police department and fire department, uh, centrally, uh, central located uh, fire station, so you would go from two to one. Um, and, and let me comment too, because I've talked to some of you at different times or whatever, if, if, if we could do it and we could rebuild the police station, um, keep it where it is, and put the money into it and get another 50 years out of it, I would be, I would be thrilled. But I really <coughs> couldn't with a straight face recommend it because if you go through with the rebuilding costs, we're going to spend the same amount per square foot as we would for new. I know with new, we're going to get a good at least 50 year lifespan whereas i really think even doing a rebuild work there's so many issues with a 97 year old building i just if that's the route you guys want to go it's fine but it, it it's i know it's a tough or a tough pill to swallow but the long-term investment is really um new in my opinion um so the investment would be 43.5 million in city buildings total now um you know, you saw the numbers before on one of the earlier slides, the 23, uh, 23 and change, 23 million and change. Uh, you know, a bond would be able, we would be able to move things around as needed 
as we got into the actual project. So, you know, what things we could address and what things um, would need to be done first and foremost and everything would all be able to be scheduled out and planned. Um, but the 43.5 would involve about 14.5 million in renovations, 13 million for a new police department, 14 million for new fire, 2 million for land. Um, keep in mind the renovation dollar is, um, we're still working on that high number. Um, but I do believe it would be more of a, a 50 year plan. Um, we would probably want to go down the uh, 30 year debt repayment. Um, it's a more manageable number, more relatable number for, for people. Um, but that, that would be um, uh, your second option. Another option that I, I did include in this um, because City Hall is underutilized, but I went through and we looked at the square footage and everything that is under underutilized, and I talked with Chief Hawkins and everything, and he, you know, listen, our department heads are, all of them are great. I mean, the, no, nobody is, nobody's looking to bust the bank if there isn't justification to, to do it right and everything, but I talked with him, and we could bring some of the police offices into City Hall, but we only have about 2,000 square foot, which if you're a homeowner, 2,000 sounds kind of big, but in, in a commercial world, it's not that much space. And if you, if you do the math and you took that off of a new build of, uh, of a police, police station, it's only a savings of about 1.5 million. I mean, if we really stretched it and stacked people up and everything, we might be able to stretch it to about a $2 million savings. Um, but then we'd have uh, the extended issues of, then, then we're kind of tied to stations, the bulk of the station would have to be real close or on our footprint here to make it, make it as workable as possible. Um, it was a legitimate idea. I mean, I followed up on it right away because I went, well, you know, if we can figure it out, uh, you know me, I'm cheap. If I can find a cheaper way to do it that gets the same objective, I'm all for it. But um, that's how I, I was actually surprised. I thought we had we would have more square footage available in City Hall, um, and, and we just we don't. Was, and by the time you build an addition and you add extra systems, it's I don't think it's the the best route. I think honestly, long term, if commercial property ever rebounded. Um, and maybe the projects around this building are done and uh, the downtown is more robust. I think when you could shed this property and move into a smaller, I, that, that would be the direction I would recommend um, because we have a neighbor to the north of us that moved out of their city hall to a smaller, more manageable size and their building set vacant for 15 years. So I, 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 I would want to be aware of when we would actually be able to do something with this property. So no one's knocking on our door going, man, I really want to build something where your city hall, can I tear it down, right? Mm -hmm. So anyways, I just wanted to kind of touch on that. Fiscally speaking, so you have uh, option, I didn't put option uh, three up here because you can just, shave a few dollars off of, uh, of option two. So option one, there are the, the different repayment methods. I mean, honestly, um, just because of the return on investment, my recommendation would be, uh, I wouldn't drag that out, I wouldn't recommend dragging out more than 20 years. Um, option two, I think it's a, a 50 year return, uh, so I don't think uh, doing it over 30 years is a, is a very big um, threat, and I think it's a, a, a manageable number. And that those numbers are based on a uh, uh, $100,000 taxable value home, um, so that would be a market value roughly of $200,000, give or take. Um, but that gives you an idea of number-wise. If if you did want to go with uh, option three, um, you know you could you can knock off probably 3% off the, you know, 
Yeah. It's, it's not very much, pennies. But um, so anyways, those are your, your numbers. All right, um, questions. We, we built a watch for you as requested. Um, and uh, oh, the mayor's got the printouts for you. This is all available on Board Docs 2, right, Deb? Madam Clerk? This is all on Board Docs 2, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear any, any questions or, or any of your thoughts and everything because I really, the big thing for me to come out of this is with a direction. I mean, I have had meetings to make sure we were squared away in the bond area for whatever decision. And you can decide to not do anything. I mean, that's whatever. I'm just, I'm the bearer of information and you point me in a direction and, uh, and we'll, we'll go at it. So we'll open up to questions now. No, Mayor Pro Tem Benedetti, and we'll go over here to Council so Dean, and uh, One question that I have is: so when you talked about the very beginning of this, the 2.1 million, that's <coughs> just in repairs in those two buildings, the police and the fire. The two. There was no. Though there You're was eight. Carve out 2.1 million. Five. Two five is walkbacks two five, out of the yeah. 23 million. So about 10 percent of that high number could be walked out. And I'll give you an example. Uh, there was a chiller noted in there that's already uh, planned to uh, do. Uh, there were a couple of roofs that are already. So that's in the whole project. That's not just the police and fire that was, station. That's every building. Right. The only thing that was exclusive to police and fire was the 8.7, Okay. if I recall. Right. OK. But the other one was for everything else. And then, um, which I know they probably did, because whoever you used to come up with all these numbers. You know, they baked in the cost overruns and all those things that, all these unforeseen things that you'll find. Right. So, and, and that's why I, I think sticking with the, the high estimates on everything was, I, I don't want it to be, I, I would hate to pitch something to the voters and them go, that's, this is great, um, and, and then turn around and go, yeah, but we're short seven million to get the project done, or some some number. So no, I I went with um, more aggressive numbers um, that were on the higher end of what the collaborative felt we would be and, and everything. Now, is it possible that yes, uh, some tough decisions would have to get made at some point? And you go well, you have to eliminate a thousand square foot here, or you know we have to whatever. That's possible, but. I put in every high number into every factoring because I the last thing I want to do is there's there's no coming back to the voters and <laughs> going we we blew it you know we just no, we'd have I, to make I, some I tough agree. decisions. And, and you, you made the ultimate statement that you know yeah we it's it's been neglected not intentionally but neglected for years. Times are bad we understand that. But we don't have that option of doing nothing. We don't. We don't. I agree we with you. We can all sit here and say that we do, but we do not have that option whatsoever. And, and, and you know, it's, and I appreciate those comments because, you know, we work a lot, we work very hard on, you know, the budget and making things come together for the budget. And you guys have been very, very accommodating and uh, um, supportive of, of all the work that departments have done to put everything together. Um, but they're really just because of going back to Proposal A and the economic downturn and everything, there, there, there's no light at the end of the tunnel that suddenly we're going to have, I think we're stable. But we're never going to be in the position without going to the voters to move the city back back to even just square one, really. Um, we, we have a hole that, and I'm glad also that you mentioned, because I don't want anybody to think. I'm not blaming anyone. It, 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 listen, you look at 1993 or whatever with Proposal A, and then you fast forward to 2008 and you had a 40% reduction in tax revenues and the workforce shrunk and all these other things and those were decisions that had to be made they, they were they were 
mm. horrible decisions, but they were necessary decisions. But there just is no avenue for us to be able to invest into the buildings adequately um, for what I think the Trenton residents expect, honestly. I'm good. Councilman Perugia. Yes, uh, several different things. On the estimate of, you know, 14, 13 million for each um, facility, Correct. is that just structural only and wiring, or do we still have to bring in furniture, bring in all that stuff too? Both of those numbers in, in, include soft costs, which would be turnkey, you walk in the door. Okay. And then as far as the options, uh, option two is I, I support. Um, as far as um, repurposing this location and uh, however that repurpose is, I kind of think it's like a Band-Aid still because eventually this building is going to end up being in the same situation we're talking about now. Yeah. So, I, I, I agree with you, and, and I, believe me, when it was brought <coughs> to my attention and I thought, man, because I always want, I always, you know, I walk in here every morning and there's no cars in the parking lot, but when I leave at the end of the day, you know, we only have 17, 18 FTEs that work out of this building. And, you know, it was built for easily double the staff and all the business that foot, foot traffic, now there's so much online stuff and, you know, everything is done remotely and all these different things. But, you know, the suggestion of, of you know, doing police, I thought it was great because Chief Hawkins said, if that's what it takes, I'll do it. But when you think from the overall, does it really help? Does it really improve the function? No, we would actually end up having people walk in if they want, whatever, wherever he divided his people up, lo and behold, 50% of the people are going to be coming to the wrong building if they want to deal with police because, you know, we, it's not like it's economical to just blow out a wall and build a two-story attachment. So I, I appreciate you, you recognize that. But I didn't want to leave it, leave anything unturned. I mean, we really right. have been open to anything. Well, I, I certainly was not trying to be negative on option three. It's just it's my assessment of it. And I'm grateful that we looked at everything we possibly could because you never know what you find when you turn over a stone. So yep. nice work. And then uh, yep. pretty much that's all I have to say at this moment. Yep. Thank you, Councilman. Mm -hmm. Councilman Gabbard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Dean, so just so I make sure that I get this straight, these are two separate buildings then we're talking about building? I mean, Yeah, and that's we're, actually, we're I'm not, glad you brought that up. Yeah. Because um, there, we had some discussions about the benefits of them being together, uh, conjoined or whatever. I'm not saying that they couldn't, depending on the property that was, would be acquired, However, it doesn't, um, it doesn't really uh, work out to be much of a savings because only the common areas can you do. So on a good day, you could say, well, they can share a training room. Right. So 2,000 square foot, instead it's going to be 1,000 square foot off of each. It's not um, this crazily good um, uh, efficiency or, or anything. Um, maybe it might work out to where it's a benefit as far as what footprint is is happened or controlled, but you know, um, it it wasn't. I don't know. I I think it's a perception that I, I I at least had until I really got into it was, you know, yeah. If you can do a combined facility, it's going to be. It doesn't net. It doesn't improve really much of anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, they absolutely need new buildings. You know, they absolutely need new buildings. So um, my other question for you is um, DPS. Yeah, so um, here's, here's the, and that's why I kind of tried to stress the flexibility in the bond dollars. So we talked um, the other week, uh, last week, about um, the, the proposed uh, a pole barn or whatever that's going to help, especially on the water side or whatever. It's it, it'll be it's a needed structure. It's going to help us and, and everything else. Um, we we would have the ability in the bond. We don't just because the collaborative 
says or has all these recommendations. We're not, we're not tied to that. We have to be mindful of that. Um, we have other options if we want to do more to any of the buildings. Um, you know, the, the library is a, is a separate fund. The water fund is a separate fund. Mm -hmm. And there are other avenues for expanding that. There also could be, uh, and, and I'm not saying it would go in any direction, but there could be uh, a million dollars that's projected that at the rink we go, we don't need that. And we would just spend it, you know, invest it. I shouldn't say spend. Invest it in another building elsewhere. So there is flexibility. Is there $9 million flexible? Probably not. And that's, I think that's where we would be at price tag wise for new TPW. But I think for the, I think it's 2.9 or 3. Yeah, 2.9 is the high. I, I think like. I think we can do a lot because that doesn't include uh, the pole barn and the uh, the training space, whatever that mm -hmm. is part of that. So, I there's and those are high dollars too. That's why I want to stress. Councilman yeah. <sighs> Bun Crooks. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just had some comments. The um, this it's a funny thing because what you're saying tonight is the same thing we said 25 years ago yep. when we were looking at building a new fire station and went to the voters you know um we went and toured many stations and they were modern they were nice like the ones you mm -hmm. showed tonight back then yeah and the wants and needs that you have more needs to me than wants are the same issues we're talking about tonight this didn't happen overnight it's it's a shame it's not like we let anything get to this point no. because it was at that point 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And uh, I just don't want to see us put you know, good money after bad. And I, I've said from day one, we need to have one central location and one central police and fire station. I don't care if they're combined, but in the same location that's uh, conducive to the whole city. And I think our residents have seen so much money go into the school systems and seeing the outcome of what they've done with our schools, and I think they are impressed with what we've done in the, in the city. And I think people expect and threaten a certain amount of class and panache and, and to keep their home values up and to keep everything in a line. And I, I really think that we need to seriously get a location, be serious about it this time, go to the voters and say, this isn't about wants anymore, this is about needs and about keeping Trenton, the city that it's always had the reputation for. So, I mean, you've done a great job. When we've talked to the collaborative how many years ago, and they're saying the same thing today. Seven years. Yeah. yeah, yep. And we, you know, saw their proposals before, and they're only getting worse. So this is not new. I mean, this is yep. just, um, we don't, we don't want to overtax our residents, but we need to stress to them, when these voters go to the polls, or if we put this on it for a bond issue, that this is a, is a, is a must. And it's a must to keep Trenton in the forefront. So, I, I, you know, we can fix up other things and band-aid a lot of things and fix them up, but not this time. Not with some of these some of these buildings. And I really hope that the residents can get on board with this and realize that uh, we we really need to do something drastic here and make Trenton the city it should be. I appreciate so. that. That's that's my whole feeling on the whole thing. I mean, uh, just as a just as just a point on one of the one of the things you, about the property and stuff. I I purposely um, I I purposely won't go publicly. I won't go public with much discussion about um, location. Uh, that would be something. Um, we would we would have other discussions on because um, we want to make sure that in the event a bond was approved that we haven't leveraged um, or increased the cost of property acquisition by going this is where we want to this is what we I have some uh, great ideas and I'm sure you guys do too and I'm probably sure we're all thinking the same type of thing but I just want to be um, 
guarded with what 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 I go public with. Right. There's a lot of opportunity there. We 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 there, are, and and there are things that can help the city or an area of the city. Um, and definitely the function of the uh, the fire department. The fire department is the one we we really need to be along the West Road to Fort Street area. But you saw that on the map, so. But <clears throat> don't think I'm not, I'm intentionally not going down the location right. road too much. Right. Okay. Okay, good. that's it, thank you. Councilman Hornbeck. I think you pretty much answered the question about the the one building. So even though there'd be like a classroom training, fitness center needs that are all kind of overlapping, you still think it would be better off in two separate buildings? Uh, no. Or fi I, financially it wouldn't be much no, different? I, right. I don't believe when you go by the square footage it would be safe. I'll give you an example. Like say, say there, I don't know how many square foot are built into the training room, but let's say that each training room is supposed to be a thousand square foot. Um, yeah, we could save a thousand square foot on on the build if we could go through and share. But there are issues with the amount of training the police officers and firefighters do with overlapping and scheduling. And I'm telling you right now, we'll still end up sending police or fire to the Westfield to do training or whatever. Um, you know, a, a fitness center. I, I, I don't want you to get. Um, crazy uh, a okay. misinterpretation of it 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 will be essentially a lot of what they have it's just in the police side we don't want the guys in the basement working working out and at the fire station they're basically stuck in a little side room where they can they can work out um, could we shave you know a hundred two hundred well maybe 500 square foot off of, yeah, you, you probably could. But the other, the other challenge with that is you're gonna take the properties available and you're gonna go, all right, instead of putting, um, I forget the square footage, 18,000 and four, 25 and 18, so you're gonna take that property and all of a sudden, well, there's only two locations we can build a combo. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. It could be built on the same location and it could be attached, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't plan for that only because it's going to take away a lot of the options. And the, it's not like, oh, we can build them together and we're going to save more than a, a small percentage. Okay. Um, I did have another question about the fire station. Uh, I've had some people ask me too, and I wasn't confident with the answer. Do the train tracks factor into us having two stations I thought that was one of the reasons behind it and moving <laughs> to one does that matter is that just a misconception um, that so has or? so the train tracks have a bearing but if you keep in mind that we're we're going to get a new west road bridge it it doesn't but when they originally built like where the police station and slash fire station is or whatever you know we do send trucks two different directions from the fire side two different directions to make sure somebody gets uh, across the tracks. They take the long way and go over West Road, or they can, you know, go the short way and go down Jefferson and cut across wherever. But um, the, the problem with our station locations, and he, I'm glad he put that map up there, the downtown fire station, fire stations need to be geographic. We put it down on, essentially on the waterfront. So if you take your arc, we took half of its response area is the river, right? And then the second choice um, back in 1967. Okay. Right. So we put our other decision, and this is probably something. Hopefully, not whatever. I won't throw anybody under the bus, but. Putting that station on King Road. It's the same problem as putting on the river, right? Uh, it's it's worse because it's on literally you could stick an oar out and you'd be on the river. I mean, it's literally you're across the street and you're there's it was 
really bad geographic decision. But in their defense, I will say this, in the 50s and 60s, Dearborn did the same thing where I came from. Um, stations were built on the cheapest property, and it was usually property that was donated by somebody because it wasn't buildable or was less than desirable. So communities very often would go, well, this will work, and they didn't really go beyond that. So, yeah, our station locations are poor, to say, um, to, to say the least. Um, but they do, it does work with us as far as uh, joint response from two different locations um, because of the tracks. The tracks are going to be an issue no matter what, though. It's just going to be a lot worse when the West Road Bridge is down. Does that answer your question? <coughs> yeah, but I, I figured the West Road Bridge would probably coincide with any building of a new station anyway. Yeah, so we'll I don't see know. how that works. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I hope so that's too. Optimistic. I I hope so too. And who's <clears throat> and one more we might be done first though. <laughs> yeah. Would not be surprised. You think? Is there any other um, like smaller departments within the city that would be able to utilize space in one of those new buildings, or would they just be exclusive fire and police? Is that like your vision? Is I think I think the vision would be yeah they're exclusive to uh, police and fire. The police especially are are challenging. Although some like. Some police and fire stations will have a you know a community room and everything, but we already have that with Westfield and everything. Um, we definitely don't need any extra office space or whatever um, from anybody in City Hall. Um, and then uh, DPW should get a very sizable renovation, so I don't think it'll really impact them either. So I don't think there would be a need, okay. um, but I'm sure instead of hosting some of the training events and stuff that we have to do in chambers here during the daytime or whatever, we can always uh, look to our brothers on the, in the other buildings and utilize their space. All right, thank you. All right, Councilman Bridges. To Emily's point of repurposing, mm -hmm. now you talk about option three and repurposing. Yeah. So we don't take option three. So is there a consideration still of repurposing some of this building for another department for this building yeah um i mean it it could be done but i it's kind of counterintuitive only because uh we we already vacated recreation out of this building so they would be where their facilities at i don't know anybody that we could bring in Okay. You know, I mean, the, the space has been created in City Hall, one, because of downsizing in staff, just like every other area of the city has a decrease in staff. Um, but the engineering department is largely wide open because we we sub that out with um, CE Rains now. So what we at one time had, you know, three engineering positions. We have actually three with a tech. Now we just have the... Um, um, uh, construction engineer um, work out of that office and then, and then the um, building department. Um, we don't have IT in the building taking up, I don't mean that derogatorily, we don't have IT in the building anymore so that's another office area or whatever. Um, we do have our uh, uh, new DDA director who's here with us. Um, you know that has an office up there but we have unused space. You know, Paul Haley works out of this building, but, um, you know, depending on the, the EOC setup and everything else, it's very likely we wouldn't have to put him in a basement anywhere, and he could um, be, be working and uh, transacting his business um, adjacent to, directly adjacent to the EOC. Um, so I don't know if that answers your, your question, you. you know. Councilwoman Rodriguez. So um, I really enjoyed this briefing. I look forward to uh, your mic on, ma'am. Turn your mic on. Is your mic on? Coming meetings. I apologize. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Um, I really enjoyed this briefing. Um, I look forward to the upcoming study sessions with the other presentations. Um, I have more. I don't really have too much of any questions because I'm still, you know, just taking it all in. I was just wondering, though, based out of option one and option two, 
do we have anything in the plans in regards to being able to save money for our tax um, payers in regards to say, solar energy, you know, to help with the cost of utilities, so, especially so if there they was, approve option two. So, I mean, everything would be built as efficiently as possible and, you know, a little bit. Would there be a possibility of adding those things in that are outside of notations made in, in what the collaborative uh, provided to <coughs> us? Yeah, that option, that option would be there. Um, but as far as actually dedicated funds um, for solar panels or, or geothermal, um, no, there are, there are not, there is not a, that's a whole other study that would have to be done. Well, because I do know that, I believe it's the uh, Department of Energy that has all these, you know, uh, grants and funding mechanisms for it. If you start to transfer over to mm -hmm. that a certain percentage yep. of the utility costs, and I really would like us to have something like that in our building assessment plans, even for some of our current buildings, because that will actually help our taxpayers if they do decide to choose option one or option two. Right. So I I, I'll be very honest with you, into. that information, there's no way that will be ready in time for, I mean, that is probably another several months long mm -hmm. effort of trying to come up with what you think could work. Um, you won't get it before the voters this year. I, I'm just being being honest. I will fine. tell you there is one. I don't know how exciting well, it is. I only but ask because I, you know, I've been doing research and things mm -hmm. like that, and I was primarily looking for another municipality that also had a super fun, super fun site like we did. Uh, however, I did find New Bedford, Massachusetts, but they have a hundred thousand voters um, constituents in their city. But they were able to um, save them money in regards to starting to move towards solar panel to help with utility costs and things like that. Mm -hmm. And they're actually on the forefront, and they've been doing it since I believe they started 2012, 2013. And it, you know, it, it's just something that I would really like us to consider if they do choose option two, the voters. Okay. As far as, you know, so energy. I'm, I'm never going to look us. away from an opportunity to save. You guys know what a thrifty person I can be as far as that stuff goes. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and, and it's not that it, it can't be built into any considerations or projects. I think the big thing when you look at, you go, well, we want to add solar or we want geothermal seems to be, a you know, on and off. Uh, trendy um, option or whatever. I think I think council will have to be mindful of what is the return on investment. And what I was going to say is mm -hmm. there is a project that will come before this body this summer um, that's going to switch all of our uh, street lights over to LED, and um, it's probably going to be roughly a three hundred thousand dollar investment, but the great news is it's going to reduce our uh, electric bill um, by about $25,000 a month. So we'll have a return on investment and in less, should be in less than a year for the, that, that expense or that, that investment. And I think that's the same way you need to analyze um, solar. Solar is great to, to talk about and everything, but does it, uh, does it apply? In, in what situations, you know, does it apply? Um, I think the the biggest thing is we need to make sure we got roofs, we got buildings that don't leak, don't sag, okay. don't back up. And I agree with you 100% yeah. on that. But I would like, you know, sometime along the way to be able to have that type of assessment and yep. see if it would be valuable for us to have on some of our buildings, yeah. not all of them, but some of them, yeah. they'll actually save more money. Yeah, I know like uh, with the solar too, I remember having a discussion with uh, Mr. Beaker and it was a great idea. Unfortunately, two thirds of the roof at Kennedy cannot right. take them. And that would be the biggest energy saver, you know, in, in our, in our, um, inventory of buildings or whatever. 
but and I did make were, a note of that in regards to whether or not some of our older buildings could actually be able to sustain that so. right right so um, other than that I mean I option three is really not an option for me <laughs> I didn't think um, it would be I didn't frame it that way on purpose but yeah I didn't want option wanna... one and option two I think uh, are pretty good by far um, and like I said earlier, I look forward to hearing more. And that's it. Yes, Councilman Perugia and then Councilman no, no. Flinner. Oh, Emily. I just, just had a response to that. I think a lot of, no matter what we do with it, like if we got a new building, there's going to be so much efficiency in new builds that it would make a big difference in a lot of things with having brand new windows and brand new heaters and air conditioners that that now with the old how probably inefficient they all are mm -hmm. i think that would immediately bring a lot more i guess um savings and more green energy to to the city i think based on i mean from a hundred year old building to a brand new build everything that would come in it would be m more efficient than what probably what we have now and i agree with you but i think we could also go a little further on some new buildings if that's what the voters choose Okay. Uh, anyone else have anything? Comments, questions, concerns, anything like that? Dean, in terms of the next steps, anything else so, you need from us? All right. So, one, I, I would appreciate if I got, I would like a firmer um, straw poll on guidance. I think I would uh, like I would like a here. straw poll from you because. Uh, needless, I mean, you know what, the budget is pretty much all set and everything, but this is a, a significant uh, draw on your, on your staff to work on this project, and I don't want to waste anybody's time. So if you guys are, are firm with, I, th I think reading the room, you guys are uh, at option two, which I don't have a problem with, but the next steps would be, um, um, I already have a um, draft resolution um, with the language in there necessary to be able to put it before the voters. I have it um, ready. Um, we have an early May deadline that would need to be met. Um, and I know you guys are probably going on for August, correct? To make it on the ballot in August. Um, and that's why I stacked up so many meetings and kept tried to keep keep everybody's schedule fluid. So, if unless there is opposition, I don't want to worry about getting into the weeds and all the details and stuff. And and we're not going to spend time planning <coughs> something unless you guys show or tell me that you got the willingness. Uh, to get this before the voters and the, and the decision can't be can't can't take too long if you want to get it before them now the, you're gonna have to give me some commitment because I don't want to waste anybody I don't know how it's nicely to say that <laughs> so tell I'll me I'll what try, you want I'll try and tie this up here. <laughs> uh, so in a, uh, Dean kind of you know was nudging things along in a certain way and I think that uh, you know I obviously didn't say anything but you know Dean doesn't go up there and share opinions that I don't agree with given the nature of his employment so that's <laughs> helpful. Um, but I you know I've gone into this with the mentality um, certainly for option two um, over the 30-year repayment period um, for the bond so I, you know, I think that that was kind of the seemingly the general consensus that we were getting here from here but I guess for given the parameters, timeline, thing like that, uh, that Dean was referencing, is there anyone that has any objections to using that guidance before uh, for our administration to continue working on this? Everyone good? I don't. I'm good with option two. Cool. And again, it will have some ebbs and flows as it goes and can get into the weeds as needed, but um, to get the kind of the bone structure of this thing rowing still. So it, here's, all right, if, if that's the consensus and that is great, I actually uh, agree with it. Of course, I agree with anything the mayor says. Um, I'm kidding. Um, no, I really do. I, th I think I, 
I know it's a big price tag. I know it's whatever. It's uphill battle. But um, if we can get to that launching point, um, I, the language is 99% there, uh, ready to go where it could be on the ballot. Now you have to take a step back and go, all right, so this would be on the ballot in August. Um, we would want to keep the flow of information going to the public throughout. So we can have more, we can have the department heads provide more information. We can do studies. I would recommend, because we only want to ruin one night a week, I would recommend doing study sessions in conjunction with regular council business throughout the summer. That way, you know, uh, police, uh, police one, one week, uh, fire another meeting, uh, recreation, or we'll have Bob from DPW or whatever. We can put together so you're getting the morsels of where we're going and, and behind the scenes we can be putting more things together so that it promotes it and communicates it to the voters. You guys know that I'm restricted and the department heads are restricted on how we can promote this. I can't tell anybody to vote for it. I can only provide them the information. The, the other information they get is going to have to come from the seven, the seven people sitting up there that have been entrusted with the welfare of the city. So, but getting back to August, you back it up and we have to make sure we're putting the information out, making it accessible. Um, I don't want to invest uh, tons of money and tons of anything into other than let's make sure we got the groundwork done between now and August and the communication is put out there. So, you know, coming up with uh, renderings and, and different things and drawings, whatever, but we don't need to get sidetracked into the weeds. In the event it would be approved by the voters in August, it would be full speed ahead um, because from issuance of any bond money, we got 36 months to get it done. So it would be a Herculean effort of <coughs> property acquisition, you know, finalizing plans and, and everything of whatever drawings and different things you can think of and everything. And at the same time, we'd be doing a lot of bidding and specking for all the other renovation work that needs to be done. It'd be very, very busy <coughs> um, 30, 36 months. Now the great thing is we don't have to take the bond money right that second. You know, it's not something that happens the day after uh, a vote to approve. Um, but there, there is a time period once, once we receive the funding. We can back charge our expenses that um, fit into the little box of the renovation and construction, um, but I, w I want that to be in fair measure, not presumptive that the voters are going to do anything. That it's a rubber, you know a rubber stamp or an easy easy task or whatever. So, um, if you guys are okay, oh, Wednesday's meeting. Um, you can cancel it, or I can, um, I have enough from you guys that I got my marching orders and I will have uh, something to you and ready on the 15th. Um, that's our next meeting, right? 15th? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so I will have something ready for you on the 15th. If you want to have police and fire um, do more for you this coming week we can. I don't have a problem if that is scheduled in as as we go. It's going to be important to keep the flow of information consistent and one way to do that is to have regular information meetings where you're getting the information but more importantly the public is getting the information. See what I'm getting at? We don't want to have 
this 43, 43.5 million and we got all these grand expectations and then we need to make sure we're able to talk about it throughout the summer is, is the honest way. So it's up to you. We can, we can meet Wednesday and I can have police and fire come in um, or we can just um, have another small discussion uh, next Monday with our regular meeting. Um, there probably will be a brief um, closed session. We'll talk about some other stuff. Um, you know, guys will figure it out. And then um, that's the way I'd like to proceed, is I'd like to have add study sessions to your council meetings. Was, does anyone have any opposition or pressing questions, needs, or anything like that that would, we would need to have the meeting Wednesday? Um, or is anything that, I mean, are we okay on the same page and we can just hold off till Monday? Right. We're good. That's yeah. fine. Okay. Councilman Rodriguez. So will they be doing their full presentation? Because, I mean, we really need something for the voters to be able to look back on as the, far as, like, yes, you know. Yes, that will be part of a study session. We may do, because um, I know uh, Chief Hawkins, he likes a lot of slides. Um, <laughs> so I've, I've seen <clears throat> some of the drafts. So uh, what my, my preference would be would be yes. And just we'll pair we'll pair up a study session, kind of count on it with every council meeting, and we can go through all the different, um, definitely police and fire because those are the the big tickets. Um, but I think having uh, probably Kevin or uh, Bob, our building guy or whatever, um, and uh, Mr. Beak or whatever, we can go through and have them do separate nights instead of doing. No offense, Chief Hawkins. Instead of doing three hours of police and 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 then another hour and a half of fire or whatever, I think I think I know it's it's exciting information and all, but I th I think we could kind of slow feed it and still make sure. And if we have to, we, we can add meetings if we're not getting through uh, enough of the material. Um, another thing too, why I'm not in rush rush with that part of it is there is another um, you know um, the chiefs both the police and fire chief are actually going to a conference specific to um, building new stations and I think they're going to be able to come back and um, add more value um, and probably more slides in Hawkins's That's case. That's what I was just going to ask. <laughs> Is there going to be more slides? But. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Can you but, keep uh, them under control? Okay. Thank I th you. I think, I think there'll be more information on And they're doing that in May. Any last thoughts? I think uh, just tying it up, but we'll plan to cancel Wednesday and proceed with next Monday for everything else. So, What I have for tonight, I'll... Share on Monday. Anyone else? Seeing none, Dean, any last parting thoughts? No, sir. No. Department heads, got anything? Public comment? Anyone wish to speak? Name, address? Uh, limit your comments to five minutes. Seeing none. We'll adjourn at 8.27 p.m. <laughs>